and you're just doing that. So, okay. <laughs> um, okay. Gee, I don't know if we're going to have a high attendance today. No, that's all right. I think we can we can just kind of pop through some things. I see that, uh, that Maya has her update that they had put all the pieces together for extraction and classifier and that they're looking for, excuse me, looking for annotators. So if there's any uh, annotators who watch this after or if we're able to source any who are interested in, uh, in helping over at risk, that would be great. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just make some personal notes about this so I can update the document later. Um, okay. Um, do you have anybody else's update, Daniel? That's the only one that I have. Um, actually, if, you, if, uh, if I can screen share for a sec, I'll share one, one thing from an interesting call I had yesterday. Oh, cool. I'll need you to enable that though. Hey Isaac, welcome. Hi. Going over a couple things. Um, but yeah, so. Shannon, I know you're also taking notes, but if you have a sec to, to enable my screen share, then I'll, uh, I'll toss oh, something on there. Oh, sorry. No worries. Um, multiple, wait a minute. Uh, do you know, I'm looking at advanced sharing options. I don't know. Oh, all and, participants. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay, are you good now? Yep, that does the trick. <clears throat> So this is, um, I had a talk with one of the founders of um, Mattermore.io. And, <clears throat> excuse me, their basic idea is to, is to build a platform. They, they've built a platform that allows people to toss up different specific challenges or problems that a group is having, um, and then try to source people who are able to, to help um, with the solution of that. So kind of building a collaboration tool. Um, they would be happy to work with us. Uh, so it was, it was only Tiana that I talked to. Um, they're happy to um, have us set up some accounts on there. Um, they're happy to work with us around things like maybe API um, access to it and such. I was thinking we might be able to tie it um, or look at whether we could tie it to the script that uh, Anselm built, where we're able to list the tasks that we need help on. This could potentially be another way for us to kind of throw that out to the wider public and an interesting way to do a little bit of, of recruiting on that, but also a place where we can find <laughs> folks who are working on specific challenges within uh, COVID-19, where the things that we're working on or where our teams may be useful. So both as sort of a, uh, a provider and as a, as a recipient, it may be a, a neat place for us to check out. So I'm gonna post a link about that onto um, General um, with a little bit more information, and then we can see if we can put a couple of accounts on there and and just check out the landscape there to see if it's something that's going to end up being uh, being a, a handy thing. Okay, great. More Thanks for the better. update. I see Archer is here as well. We've got an, a sort of a cozy group today, Archer. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, so, so far, we, we've mostly, we've covered Maya's update through Daniel. Daniel was just sharing about his meeting from yesterday. I was asking about this letter from Dimitri that I saw in general, literally uh, minutes before I started this mm -hmm. call. Um, and I haven't read it yet, but it sounds like it's sort of a big deal. Yeah, it's actually great because uh, Dimitri is, is a huge advocate of open science and knowledge sharing, and it's very relevant to what we're doing. And he has been kind of lurking for a while and now he he activated which is very exciting yeah all right okay um, well isaac is here and isaac you know we always want to hear from you absolutely um so yeah for my team i guess the major thing was um yeah so we we're still working on kind of more robust evaluation metrics because we're still not sure if we're just overfitting to the couple of weeks we're testing on. So we're working on adding that. We open sourced the main forecasting library, which had primarily previously actually been used on another project for flash flood and river flow forecasting. So 
We're hoping to make that into a general time series forecasting library since it's already been used on two different forecasting stuff. Um, yeah, and so, oh yeah, and confidence intervals. We now have confidence intervals for our predictions. So not just like what the prediction is, but also a 95% confidence range for where the coronavirus is, cases will be, um, you know, end days from now. So uh, that's kind of what we've been working on. That's great. Yeah. This I think is going to be especially interesting considering the the new reopening procedures and also just the increase in gatherings variously. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if, if we haven't done it yet, Isaac, um, would there be uh, a time that we could set up to just do a quick little uh, Zoom video with you and record it? Uh, that's, that's just a synopsis of what it is that the team is working on and kind of the current state of that. I think one thing that we might want to try to do is even just once a week, maybe, with each of the team leads do one that's just a quick focused piece of that, because um, that's something that we can then push out to some of the people who are interested in what it is that, uh, that we're working on and how it might, might help them. Um, sure, sure, yeah, we can definitely do that um, uh, if you want. I, I also don't know if, I know I sent it to some people and some people saw it, but I did write up a roadmap for our team of our current objectives and stuff. So that's yeah, online. Right. That's perfect. And hey, Isaac, um, did you get any people from the our weekend push for help? Um, no, that's like still another area we need to work on is that, as I said, persisting data. So I didn't get anyone responding directly as kind of um, for the, on the data kind of data architecture engineering side. Which is, Do you think we, we should actually ask for different type of people, more like DevOps versus uh, Python engineers? Because it may be irrelevant request to those people that I sent out. Because I sent it to 29 people, and if none of them replied, that most probably means it's uh, irrelevant or like not that relevant. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. Like, the main thing we're going to use to persist the data is Airflow, which is written in Python. And so, um, yeah, but there's kind of, I don't know, it seems like there's also a lack of kind of data. Not, not, we have a lot of data scientists around the org and machine learning people, but there aren't people good at really developing data pipelines to run at scale. Um, mm -hmm. be, and so, our big need is that we, need this data to be persisted on a daily basis and versioned and tracked so we can feed it into our model. Um, and I can do some of that, but I could really use someone who's a good data engineer to come in and kind of lead that effort. Um, and we have a couple, we do have a couple of people working on it, but they're I'd say they're pretty junior overall, like they haven't deployed production level pipelines in that context or only done an internship. So if we could find someone with like two or three years of industry experience willing to volunteer to kind of weed that, that would be great. Do we know, have, have, have Anton or Slava looked at it? I know both of them have some pretty good experience in that zone. Um, yeah, yeah, they, they've, looked at, they've looked at it. I think they're, they're pretty busy with the other stuff though, so. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, if I could get like one of them working on it part-time, that would be good too, so. Okay, yeah, well, we can, we can keep our eyes out maybe in the, in the help needed area. Have we already filled out the, uh, the form there? We can, we can do a bit of a search to, to find someone who can help with the data pipeline. Yeah, yeah, I, I filled out the form. Um, yeah, no one's responded to it yet, um, but yeah, hopefully someone will, so. And I know we're, we're just working, I can, I'll, I'll mention it specifically also to, to sort of Tyler and Bianca and the people who are working on our new system, sort of getting a CRM set up and getting things so that we can try to have it be a little bit less pull and a little bit more push to get the information uh, to the people with the right skill sets and availability. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. So for those of us who are not totally up to date on recruiting and human resources, can we talk about this form? Because what I thought happened was I said, hey, Tyler, I need something. And then he said, I need something. And then people came. But this sounds more official. So what is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is super cool. Do you want to share screen? Uh, oh, actually, I already have share screen. Let me find this here. Yeah, this is a brilliant thing that Anson set up. Uh, let me pop over to Corona.
and we'll get to our help needed. So yeah, so if I need help on something or other, uh, the little blue, you can see my screen, yeah? Yes, yes. The little blue lightning bolt here, I can pop there. And I believe it's our, is it our request manager one here? And now I can type in, uh, Isaac needs help with developing a stable, robust data pipeline. Skills needed. Uh, so Isaac, what would you, what are the key skills that you say are needed for what you're doing there? Um, so Airflow, um, so yeah, Airflow, Python, um, Pandas, um, yeah, those are the major ones. Perfect. And how long would you guess we, we would want somebody to, to tackle, would, would need to commit to tackle that? Yeah, so, uh, well, I think, as I said in the, when I submitted above, like an hour a day um, or so. Perfect. So this is just a resubmit, but then you see we can then, we can just quickly put in Isaac. Resubmit. And that may, that adds the request in here. And then anybody can go into our help needed area and click volunteer there. And that'll put them in touch with Isaac so that they can chat further about it. The um, trick, and I'll, I'll delete that one right now because we do have the one above, which is better because Isaac wrote it instead of me. Um, but the next step that we're working on is having uh, Bianca and Slava and a few folks are working on setting up a CRM and then looking at how we can have this kind of form information get pushed out to people with the right skill sets. So that's, that's still a, definitely a work in progress, but, uh, but that's the goal that we're, we're shooting for now. Thank you. Thank you for the demo. That was very cool. I think I actually did click on one of those now that I think of it. I just didn't know how to open one. So great. Now I know. Um, okay. I'll be, yeah, I'll be taking a look at that too. Um, and another thing also is um, I can, I've been holding off on this post I was going to make at work. I think I, I can make it today and I can add this to the, we need this and maybe someone will see it. That'd be great. Okay. Um, all right. Very cool. I see that Fatima joined us as well. Fatima, do you have anything you want to share with us? Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, I actually have to record the weekly update video that I haven't had any time to create to talk about things in general, but I think the main updates are we're preparing for the JITMA uh, workshop on June 22nd, I think. Um, we also submitted um, our abstract of uh, building infrastructure for open science to SCI NLP uh, workshop slash mini practical conference on NLP and knowledge ex retrieval uh, that happened this weekend, I believe. And we're just expanding on different initiatives that are touching all the things that we're working on. While again, like everything keeps increasing and we were trying to like shape it and sculpt it in, into something that we can push out. And it's very, very challenging because there's so much stuff and it keeps increasing and the entropy keeps in increasing, but we, we need to, to do our best to formalize it. And I think my original estimate of two weeks, which was two weeks ago in terms of having a product was, was uh, exaggerated um uh, estimate like uh, or like underestimated uh, estimate and uh if i would guess maybe we are two weeks away from uh having some demo of a product and then we're gonna have uh another roadmap for actually like user interface and things like that that's great yeah that's exciting um wow cool one thing I'll, I'll throw out there, I put it into one of the Slack messages, but it's a useful thing to have on the call as well, is that for any of the teams that are um, working on and especially need to have developed any, uh, any kind of products that are out there, some, some interfaces that people can use um, to, to let us know about it and to make sure that we get that onto the products and services sheet. Because one of the key things that's, uh, that's increasingly true 
is we've got some really neat stuff that we have that's happening, um, but we need to know how to talk, especially folks who meet like me, who are more ignorant about what the daily workings are on the teams. Um, we need to know how to talk to some of the external partners who could most benefit from what you're doing um, about what it is that we've, that we've done. So uh, let us know. Uh, and also, especially if you, if you know anybody who's already looking at and already working with any of the tools that we've built, uh, then please let me know that as well, because we're trying to, to put in some details around that. And that lets us contact people and figure out how we can, how we can refine things too. Oh, and I think I asked Rohan to create slash projects page on our website to help us formalize things. And at least like that will push us into uh, making sure there is something that makes sense. Yeah. And one other piece that we're going to be, we're going to be updating the website on is the teams page. And just to say, this is one of those pieces that is an interesting challenge because we have our internal culture and then have to interface to that external piece. And internally, um, it's, it's key and beautiful that what it's about is like, who's able to get stuff done and then who's doing that, who's getting the stuff done. And that's what we care about. Um, as we are increasingly trying to get what we're working on in front of people who are sometimes higher level governmental officials. Sometimes they have very little time and a lot of different people trying to get their attention. We need to be able to make sure that they can pretty quickly parse through and say like, oh, okay, this is a group that I need to look into further. And so for that, we're also going to be adding some of the more traditional pieces of, you know, it doesn't have to be an org chart, but we'll be listing a few a few of the team leaders and a few of the pieces that are there to really hold those people up uh, and to, to show the, the traditional credentials that we also have uh, on the team. Uh, Actually, so I just realized uh, I opened Slack conversation with Rohan and after telling him to do slash projects, I realized that it would be better to create slash teams uh, because that's exactly the place where we can show credentials in the context of what people are working on. Because again, I think it's like it's impossible to have our slash team page to kind of show credentials of every amazing individual, but it's possible in the context of specific teams. So, you know, we would have a team which is a team patient forecasting where Isaac would be a leader with uh, certain credentials and certain expertise and Serge would be in there with his epidemiology and other things and yeah i think teams make it makes it possible to do that yeah. all right i i think that's a great idea i i feel like it would be a lot easier to explain to new people joining like kind of what's out there i had that experience too i think when i, I when i was back at university i was in the robotics club and it was great to join because they had they had a good page that said here's what we're doing if you wanted to join here's what you could do too and it really, it really sells it because if you're not sure where you fit, it's nice to know all the options and we have so many options here. So yeah, definitely a great idea. Um, so this product thing might tie in nicely to like, I, I don't have like a complete VT team update because I haven't been a regular attendance of the um, sort of the current wave. Um, but I have been like, we've been regularly having our software dev meetings. So mostly we've been taking the approach so far of doing most of our software overhaul stuff on the, kind of a version of the round one submission. So there's now a dedicated branch that's kind of supposed to like, it's supposed to represent the round one submission, which was initially not sort of Gitified. It came from Git sources that were like plopped into a notebook and then we sort of resorbed it. Um, and uh, the, the goal I think was sort of to be like, well, if we wanted to deploy the round one submission outside of the context of Kaggle, like let's make a place where that would be possible. And then maybe if we learn some good procedures, we could we could use the same uh, best known methods we've we've picked up, we could use going forward on on future branch work. Um, so we've been doing that. And I have to, th this thing about who can get what done, was, is, it hits home because I keep sort of signing up to do things. And then the people who actually have time to do them, get them done before I get to them, um, which is, which is fantastic. We have a couple of guys who are sort of between things right now. So they're like, they're like, yeah, this is what we have time to do right now. And that's what we're doing. And it's really exciting. We have um, been already applying uh, some stuff from Charlie Hoyt's talk. Uh, which I'm, yeah, this is, it's starting to look more uh, pr productizable, more maintainable. I'm getting, getting excited. We have unit tests now that Jen put together. Um, 
And I don't know, okay, I have the old version of this like sitting next to me because I, I refer to it whenever I'm looking at the code. But like a while ago, I was the complaining. The Bible of vaccines team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and there's, by the way, there's a good version of this. And I don't know if everyone on the call has seen either the, the old version or the good version. Um, but um, basically, I was, I think in our early software dev meetings, I was sort of like, well, we have to figure out like sort of what would the block diagram for the code be. And um, luckily, I didn't have to do that. And Dan just went through and did it. Um, and the interesting bit, the product bit is the bit at the bottom, the poorly highlighted bit with the squigglies around mm -hmm. it. Um, and so basically, each of these would be theoretically like a different web interfaceable dashboard. Um, so if, if it's not, is it, I don't know, is it legible or should I read them off? Uh, reading them is not, not a bad thing, but some of them are legible. Okay, so I have to turn it around. Okay, so uh, Maybe one you is... you can take a picture and actually send it to general and... Oh, I'll send the good one. Cool. I'll send the yeah, good yeah. one, the like the print one that is cool. legible and color-coded. Um, but uh, yes, I mean, just to run through them, there's a dr drug treatment candidate extractor, CORD19, PPI, um, I can't read this part, a, a juvenile therapy extractor, clinical lit pharmacology dashboard, and uh, COVID-19 drug treatment meta discourse visualizer. Um, I don't know to what extent this has evolved, but it, presumably there's some version of like the bullet point products. I don't know, like if they're, they're probably not product ready. On the other hand, if we had kind of a real customer, that would also right. give us a little bit more specific spec to work from instead of just kind of guessing and taking from like discovery engine specs, which is fine. But maybe, you know, since we're talking about making a list, I'm now yeah. wondering if we should engage Dan in this conversation actively because it seems like he was able to list those off pretty readily. Absolutely, and I think that, that if we can get those um, for each for each area within the kind of products and services sheet, we have something around like you know what's the name, what what's the goal with it, and what's its status. And we can have like here's the things that are finished, here's the things that we're planning. But in the middle, there's the kind of that key area, which is where a lot of these fit. Where like we have something to tinker with, but if we can get somebody who's in the right field tinkering with it with the team, uh, then, then that'll, that'll be great and can help the team in, in developing things. So for sure, if we could get each of those different pieces listed onto that products and services page, then I can try to type, find some time this week uh, to go through and just talk to whoever the relevant team leads are for the different sections of those um, so that we can, we can pull out and say, okay, you know, your ideal client, who does, what does that look like? And then we can see if we can find some people who, who would be interested in experimenting with it. Okay. Very cool. So we have four minutes. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to bring up? Uh, I would ask if we had some progress with the podcast. Good Unfortunately, oh, sorry, sorry, Daniel. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say I had nothing to say anyway. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I was saying as well. No, no new information there. Oh, actually one thing, um, I've been very much thinking about the whole jars thing, you know, there's the, uh, the, the old story around the person who split the class, make a lot of jars versus make a perfect jar. Um, the, the people who make lots of jars end up making better jars than people who try to make it perfectly. I'm going to try this week, if it's fine with you all, to just start mucking around with doing interviews with people. And so they're going to be, they're going to be not over, they're not going to be produced at all. It'll simply be Zoom calls with people that we record to try to get to the heart of some of the stuff that's going on for them at Corona Y. Um, and then just throwing those up onto YouTube. Um, and then those can make a basic set of building blocks for someone who's more talented than I in terms of building that into an actual something that's slick and polished. But I figure, I think there's a lot of places where it's easy for us to get hung up on trying to do things at a certain level. Um, and that for a bunch of things like that, it's good for us to just dive in and just start doing those. And, and also that's something that anyone can do. If somebody has somebody who they would be really keen to talk to around something or other, uh, do it, make a Zoom call, record it, throw it up somewhere or other. And we can, we can use our radical transparency as a way to generate some content that may be uh, increasingly of interest to the public as well. Hey Daniel, if you if you need someone just for an initial like collection of sound bites, I'm not by any means the person who's done the most work on any of the teams, but I'm enthusiastic and I can talk. I, I'm I, you're one of the people I most want to talk to about about some of that because you have been on a bunch. That would be amazing. So you've, you've been here since the beginning, doing all kinds of great stuff. So that's I, I would listen to that. Yeah, Aww, thanks. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, I think that would be really fun. Um, okay. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's just schedule it and go for it. We shall. All right. Cool.
All right. I think is is uh, if, if anyone else doesn't have any more more comments, we're we're good. All right. Good Thanks call, so guys. Much, See you guys soon. All right. Bye bye. Bye.